up and we're going to get up on our left here, folks. Fisher, you see some more of that high grade copper ore. And that's all malachite there. And then across, hold on to your helmets, you'll see some more up in this area. Some more of that malachite right in there. And then down here's probably the best specimen of all. You see the malachite in the middle? Surrounded by galena lead. Now down here you see this reddish, this rust colored, looks like it looks like rust. That is low-grade iron ore. It's called hematite. All over the world. Pipe in here and you pull down, and when you pull down, that door is designed to go up and into this three quarter ton, we get three quarter ton of high grade copper ore. He jumped off of the platform and then he trammed this out the damn pine shaft. The fact that there's four chutes tells me there were four trammers because understand for the company to make money, they had to get the rock out of the mines. As long as it was down there, they weren't going to make it money. And then again, there's so much room between you and me, and the managers never made room as they had to, tells me. There was another set of tracks there, and there was four empty cars sitting there with switches on both ends. So when these four loaded left, these four came, got in line, and got ready to go, you see. And that way the dream of the, of the company to have their, the, the rock keep going out of the mine was fulfilled, you see. It kept going out of the mine. Now this went on until 07. In 1907, they brought down mules. And the mules could pull about seven or eight of these cars. And they uh, worked out very well here, very well. They were down here about 20 years from 07 till 27. Matter of fact, that drift around back there, you go back that way, about 200 feet, there's a mule barn with about 12, with about 12 or 6, 12, 13 stalls in it where the mules stayed. Wow. See, the mules lived down here. Now, this went on until 27. In 27, they brought down the trolley. This was the trolley. Wherever there was action, there was this trolley wire. 250 volts of DC power goes through this baby, went through this baby. Now, I worked 11 years and two times I hit that baby. Two oh. times, bam, into the water ditch. Not before a loop, folks. Matter of fact, my wife says I'm still suffering from that 50 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the tasers the police use. It just, it stuns you, but it's a temporary, it's a temporary shock. It, 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 you'll get over it a little bit, you know. It's the AC power, the one that would hold you and kill you, you know. That was the DC power we had here. But what did hurt the people and kill the people was the motors. You see in a trolley motor, when you push your tickets right outside the office, there's a big black Goodman trolley motor with a stinger on it. It could pull about 30 of these cars. So they had the extra power, so what they did, because of the extra power, they went from the three-quarter ton to the ton to the ton and a half to the two-ton to the three-ton car, and they only wide the drifts wide enough for the cars to get through. And the rule of thumb was, and still is, the loaded motor with the high-grade ore has the right-of-way, and it's up to the Myers standing away the motorman. And because at that time the, the, the cells were so narrow, a lot of times the miners couldn't stay out of the way and didn't stay out of the way. And there was a lot of, there was a lot of fatalities and casualties. As a matter of fact, you looked at statistics in 27 or 28, when the more modern mechanization came down, that's when the, the, the injury rate and the fatality rate started to climb. When they brought down the air, that's all they brought down. So they would start drilling the hole, and quickly the chair would get filled with dust. <coughs> Now, most touch in copper, however, and unfortunately, in this limestone and copper, there's silica. And silica is like the black lung that doesn't cough up. And these young men in five years were dusted, and ten years later, they're diseased. At first, they thought tuberculosis, they realized it was silicosis. So what they did, they brought down the water. Now, this is a liner from back in the day. This is what they drilled. This is the liner, see? And the water went right through here. Matter of fact, you'll see the, you see the water right there, how it goes right there. Well, they had one right here like that, see? The water would go through the machine, and, if, and then it would go through the drill rod, because the drill rod has a hole in it, you see? 
and it go right through the drill rod. And then it would go right into the hole itself and would come out and be like mud slurry. So that took care of the dust problem. When I came down here in 56, there were just a couple of places that had this liner. Two old timers that didn't want to give them up. Everybody else had that jack leg because that jack leg does the same thing this liner does. The same thing. But you see how hard this is, more difficult this is to set up because this, this machine weighs about 300 pounds. And it was just two old timers that didn't want to give them up because they were used to them. That's the reason for it. But this timber over here is all built from 1911. I don't know about that, but I know Joe with his carbide light in 1925 uh, put his name there in, in 1925. So I think Joe was the first graffiti guy there was, I think. He's the one who started graffitis. <laughs> but anyway, and then this is the cars, folks. This is the one ton. This is the two ton and a half, and this is the three ton. We don't have a two ton here. And the way they dumped... Of course, you want to dump the other way, not this way. And, but if they were fuller, easy to dump, it's when they were... It's when they had a lot of mud in them, they were very dangerous. Could you dump them, they'd come back at you. And then folks, 